The wonder startup Theranos, by the assumed wonder woman Elizabeth Holmes, made it big on the charts when it got launched as a blood testing startup. Who would have known that a few years down the line, the founder would end up facing trials for fraud and would potentially spend years in prison? Keep watching for some shocking details of the case. But first, make sure you hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. Theranos a blood testing firm that promoted a purportedly groundbreaking technology was on the rise in 2014. Theranos claimed to be able to run hundreds of tests, possibly over 240, ranging from cholesterol levels to intricate genetic analyses with just a single pinprick of blood, whereas prior technology required one vial of blood for each diagnostic test completed. Theranos appeared to be providing technology that could change medicine and save lives all across the world since it was automated, quick, and affordable. Elizabeth Holmes, the firm's founder and CEO, reportedly dropped out of Stanford to launch Theranos with the help of her tuition funds. She was just over 30 years old at the time the company reached its pinnacle. The company, which had received over $700 million in investment from notable investors like Larry Ellison and Tim Draper, had emerged as the brightest lead in Silicon Valley and was valued at over $9 billion. Holmes, who owned more than half of that value, was hailed as the female Steve Jobs. But things didn't go the way Holmes might have wanted. The tests were ineffective, and the corporation was charged with frequently falsifying the results. One patient claimed that a blood test showed that they were miscarrying while pregnant, while another claimed that they had received false positive HIV findings. The company, which was once valued at more than $9 billion, 6.6 .6 billion pounds, failed in 2018 following a number of regulatory inquiries. A California jury found Holmes guilty of four charges of wire fraud and conspiracy to conduct wire fraud on Monday. At a young age, Holmes had her eyes set on becoming an inventor. She aspired to follow in the footsteps of her great-great-great-grandfather, who helped pioneer the bread-making industry in the late 1800s by co-founding Fleischmann's Yeast. She believed she had cracked the code when she was just 19 and was enrolled in Stanford. She started Theranos in 2003 operating out of the basement of the apartment she shared while in college. She persuaded her parents to let her withdraw from university and use the education trust they had set up for her, full of confidence. She utilized it to recruit her first staff and rent a lab. Holmes' family had a fear of needles, which could make her mother and grandmother dizzy at the sight of blood, which motivated her to enhance medical tests. When Wall Street Journal reporter John Carreyrou started looking into the reliability of the company's testing in 2015, Shortly after Theranos reached its record $9 billion value, Holmes's fantastic claims started to fall apart. When Kerry Rue went to Holmes for comment for his article, she begged Rupert Murdoch, owner of the journal and a Theranos investor, to stop it from being published. The issue in Silicon Valley is that it can be difficult to tell the difference between fraud and simply participating in the culture of faking it. Theranos was an early warning of a cultural shift in Silicon Valley that has allowed promoters and scoundrels to prosper. Roger McNamee, a tech venture capitalist and opponent of big tech who chose not to invest in Theranos, made the statement. He thinks that Silicon Valley has an absolutely endemic culture of secrets and falsehoods, a culture that allowed Theranos' technology to go unsearched. Ambition has its benefits. Computers and cell phones were created through the promise of a better future and subsequent attempts to realize that vision. But for shareholders, attempting to distinguish between charlatans and revolutionaries is a challenge that is always changing. Manish Leswani, CEO and creator of Silicon Valley mobile app startup Headspin, was detained in August of last year on suspicion of cheating investors. There are enormous fortunes to be gained and lost for those putting money on the line. Although confidentiality is necessary for these businesses to succeed, it can also be a distraction when even investors and workers are unaware of the technology or are not allowed to access it. This is exactly what was wrong with Theranos. Everyone was told that the science was there, including journalists, investors, legislators, and so on. However, when questions were raised, they were assured that the technology was too top secret to be thoroughly analyzed, tested, or described. Theranos' principal customer, Walgreens, grew frustrated with the lack of explanations provided by the business about how the technology operated. The trust-based nature of the system is fundamentally incompatible with the culture of faking it, which fosters scandals of the Theranos variety in which false claims go unchecked. 
After the company hit rock bottom, former Theranos employees described being under strong pressure to restrict critical comments made in public or to keep silent completely. To safeguard Theranos' brand, the business recruited strong, pricey, and active attorneys. According to Corey Kreider of Foxglove, an organization that supports whistleblowers in coming forward, this is widespread in Silicon Valley. What's interesting is that amidst the chaos of the company collapsing, the founder was busy with her romantic relationships. Holmes apparently found the time to become engaged to hotel heir Billy Evans and eventually married him as she waited for her trial. In the aftermath, Holmes was found guilty of fraud in federal court. On three counts of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, jurors convicted Holmes guilty in January. Four other counts against her were dismissed and the jury was unable to agree on a decision on the other three. Ramesh Sunny Bawani, Holmes' old love interest and business partner, was also found guilty of fraud in July. On each of the 12 fraud-related charges, he was found guilty. Coming back to how the story went down with Theranos, John was able to publish his article in the Wall Street Journal, indicating that Theranos was not utilizing its own technology to do the majority of its tests due to the inefficiency of its own equipment. This was made possible in large part by the information provided by Theranos whistleblowers. Following FDA examinations, everything stated in John's report was found to be accurate. Theranos' response was startling. Holmes initially angrily refuted the accusations made against her and the business. With some Theranos employees even screaming, Fuck you, carry you, John became a perceived enemy of the corporation, and Theranos even threatened to sue him. However, Holmes resigned as CEO and was charged with criminal fraud in 2018, along with former company president Ramesh Balwani, for allegedly deceiving investors and making false promises about the effectiveness of the business's blood testing technology. Following an FBI investigation, the company was officially shut down three months later, leaving thousands of former employees, many of whom John discovered to be talented individuals with integrity, uncertain about their futures. In January 2022, Holmes was found guilty on four charges of defrauding investors and now faces up to 20 years in prison. More information around the downfall of Theranos was revealed in the trial, with prosecutors accusing Holmes of destroying evidence in Theranos' final days of business. Testifying in her own defense, Holmes admitted to mistakes in Theranos' operation, but continued to maintain that she never knowingly defrauded patients or investors. At his critically acclaimed book, Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup, John goes further in depth on the facts behind the Theranos crisis and the inquiry process. The media's interest with the business and its creator continues in the meantime, as evidenced by the pieces that question the veracity of Holmes' well-known baritone voice and the podcast The Dropout, which is devoted to the rise and demise of the Theranos empire. The Dropout, a new TV depiction of the controversy starring Amanda Seyfried as Holmes, is scheduled for a March international premiere on Hulu and Disney+. The controversy will also be featured on television and in movies. A full-length version of the documentary, The Inventor, Out for Blood in Silicon Valley, was produced and directed by Oscar-winning Alex Gibney, is currently in production. Jennifer Lawrence has been cast in the role of Holmes, while Vanessa Taylor, The Shape of Water, will pen the screenplay. Adam McKay, the big short, is attached to serve as the film's director. While Theranos became a misery for Holmes, the entertainment industry found the story fascinating and started creating content out of it that would sell. Do you believe that the Holmes' startup idea was good enough to make it through? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video.